In this video, we'll be discussing first stage regulator considerations for back mount twin sets. We're going to begin by discussing the design form factors that affect hose routing of these four common first stage regulator designs. So what we have here are the four uh, basic uh, form factors uh, for different regulators. And each one of these regulators uh, I'm using actually represents uh, several other regulators that are similar in form factor. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to introduce each one of these uh, types of regulators. And then what I'm going to do is uh, we're going to then um, talk about the uh, advantages and disadvantages of each type of form factor. All right, so this regulator here, uh, this is actually an atomic uh, M1 and it represents the category of regulators, primarily piston regulators, that um, uh, may or may not have a turret. And so since this is cylindrical in nature, there are some issues with having the, um, uh, using this type of regulator. The second type of regulator that I have here, this is a generic regulator. Uh, I believe this was actually um, a regulator from uh, Scuba Max. Uh, but it is a uh, Taiwanese uh, slash Chinese clone, uh, which uh, is actually produced by a number of different places. And um, it's a uh, four slash five low pressure port regulator. You see uh, two ports here, um, the high pressure port here, two more ports here, another high pressure port. Sometimes this has a, um, uh, another port on the bottom. This is the Mare's uh, diaphragm regulator, and uh, it is similar to uh, this regulator, except that it has uh, an additional uh, larger housing and more uh, regulator ports on the bottom. The last regulator we have here uh, is unique, uh, and uh, this is the X-Deep NX700 first stage regulator. And um, it is unique because it has uh, a turret here um, in the same axis as the, um, the DIN fitting, whereas the conventional ones like this uh, actually have um, actually have the uh, turret 90 degrees. So these are the four representative type regulators that we're going to be talking about here uh, shortly. This is the cylindrical piston uh, regulator that is representative of many other types of regulators. Uh, again, this is an Atomic M1, uh, but the form factor is very similar to the Mark 25 Scuba Pro uh, and um, uh, also the Halcyon, which is like the Mark 25, and many others. Uh, there are some diaphragm regulators that have a similar uh, type uh, layout. So these types of regulators can come with or without a port, and the port, or sorry, with or without a uh, turret, and the uh, turret makes things a little easier uh, to, um, uh, to route houses. Uh, and uh, many of these types of regulators will actually have a, uh, an extra port here. This one has four ports around the turret and then one in the bottom. Some have this, some do not. Uh, so um, one of the issues about having a regulator like this is the angle at which the, uh, the ports are for the low pressure um, ports. Uh, and so what this enables you to do is to have two hoses coming out at 90 degrees uh, angle. And so this uh, makes it possible to, uh, to use this type of regulator uh, for uh, doubles type uh, diving. Uh, one of the issues with this is the angle between the high pressure port and the low pressure ports. Uh, these two particular ones, they're in the same plane. Uh, as we'll see, uh, that, is not, um, that is something that can cause um, a few hose routing uh, difficulties. This is the second major category of first stage regulators. This is uh, again uh, a fixed turret, a diaphragm type regulator. And these have uh, generally four low pressure ports, uh, two on each side. This is a high pressure port here. It's the same on the other side. Sometimes again uh, you will see these with a fifth port on the bottom. All right, so um, with this type of particular regulator, see if I can get the right angle, you'll notice that the high pressure ports and the low pressure ports have a slight angle on them uh, relative to each other, and this helps with the hose routing. This is something that the cylindrical, uh, the cylindrical type regulators do not have. They do not have uh, this particular angle. 
Uh, this particular regulator does happen to be environmentally, um, environmentally sealed. So this is the Moray's uh, 75X regulator and uh, the Moray's 72X regulator, which uh, uh, you'll see uh, in a subsequent uh, section of this video, uh, is very similar. Uh, so um, the difference between this, uh, the Moray's 72 and 75X regulators uh, in comparison to uh, the fixed turret uh, diaphragm regulators, which we talked about before, is that the housing for these uh, is much larger. The body of the regulator is much larger. And what Maris has done with that is they have put in uh, additional ports. So this particular regulator uh, actually has a total of eight low pressure ports, four on the bottom and two on each side, here and here. And the high pressure port is, um, there are two high pressure ports right here. So the great advantage of this design regulator uh, is at least uh, for back mount doubles is that you can have multiple hoses coming out of the same uh, direction in the same plane. Uh, so what this allows you to do is to have a very clean hose routing uh, system where you can have everything routed in and down uh, in order to uh, create a clean uh, unoccluded, um, unoccluded access to the uh, valves. This is the uh, X-Deep uh, NX uh, diaphragm regulator. And uh, this regulator uh, has been a long time coming. Uh, it's been in uh, EU testing for quite a while. And then uh, what happened was that the coronavirus hit and the factory uh, then stopped producing uh, regulators for a while. So uh, as I mentioned earlier, this is a very unusual regulator, uh, which can be used for back mount, single back mount diving, tank diving, double uh, back mount diving, <clears throat> side mount, and as a stage bottle. And so uh, again, what's uh, unique about this particular regulator is one of the things is that the turret, okay, is located in line with the, um, is in line with the den. Uh, there are other regulators that are similar to that, uh, but they are uh, cylindrical in shape, and so they don't have the advantage of having pressure ports, low pressure pressure ports, uh, coming off of uh, both the um, the body and also the um, the turret. Okay, so this is a little bit unusual in comparison to those. Another thing that is very unusual about this is the turret. There are a total of three low pressure ports coming off of the uh, turret. And then there is uh, the locking mechanism, which allows you to either lock the, um, the turret in a particular position and also uh, to uh, leave it free in case that would be uh, more advantageous in certain uh, hose applications uh, like um, uh, decompression or stage bottles. But the subject of our uh, uh, video today is actually back mount uh, double regulators. So, uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at this and what this does is it enables you to uh, take uh, your hoses and actually put them at any angle you want, uh, 90 degrees to each other like we talked about earlier with the cylindrical uh, piston regulators. Uh, and also uh, it enables you to have a good uh, 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 lead here uh, with the high pressure ports. Okay, so this is a very unusual regulator. Uh, just hit the market and uh, I don't think it's readily available for uh, distribution at this point yet. Uh, and uh, as I said um, earlier, there will probably be a separate video on this because this is such an unusual, uh, relatively uh, revolutionary regulator because of its ability to be used for all kinds of different applications. We're going to discuss uh, hose routing next. And in particular, we're interested in three things uh, that the tank valves are easily accessed, the isolator valve is also easily accessed and that the hose have no sharp bends. This is the piston regulator configuration for twin set back mount uh, diving. And uh, in this case, uh, we have the uh, Atomic M1, again, which is representative uh, also of this type. 
which would include the Mark 25 and the Halcyon and others. Uh, this particular set of regulators does have the turret and also has the bottom low pressure port. So what that does, it enables you to get a little better uh, lead in the event that your ports are not lined up 100% um, uh, like you need to. So uh, here again we have the, um, we have the, uh, the long hose and we have the uh, primary bladder inflator here. Uh, we have the necklace regulator here, and we have the high pressure uh, uh, gauge hose there. So this is a very clean uh, setup here. Uh, the, note how the uh, regulators are angled in. Sometimes you see uh, people with the regulators vertical, and that does stress the hoses out a little bit more, but sometimes it's necessary according to what you're trying to do. So as long as you don't have a redundant bladder and... Uh, uh, you can have a good uh, clean lead, uh, but if you had a redundant bladder and you were coming off of the left post, it would cause a hose angle issue. Similarly, if you were diving with a dry suit and you preferred a right hand regulator uh, inflation situation, uh, you would also have a problem because of the two leads. Um, the only way that you could actually handle the dry suit here successfully would be to have the uh, dry suit inflator hose come off of the left post. So there are some limitations uh, to uh, this design, but if you're not going to dive with the dry suit or you're willing to accept a left post inflation situation, and if you're not using a redundant bladder, which many people do not like or prescribe to, uh, this type of um, cylinder setup would be uh, quite okay. Uh, it is possible that you could set it up for a redundant bladder and a right hand dry suit inflation lead, but what you would have to do to avoid uh, having two extreme angles, you would have to mount the regulators in a more vertical position, which could lead to uh, stressing the hose uh, angle out. So this is the uh, cylindrical piston type uh, setup, and again, this is also applicable to some uh, regulators, I believe, like the Hollis, which has a diaphragm, uh, but uh, does have a uh, port down at the bottom, but it's cylindrical. So it has a similar form factor to uh, the Atomic uh, M1s here. Here we have the non-turret diaphragm uh, form factor uh, design, and uh, in order to uh, get a reasonable hose routing uh, to allow access to the isolator valve and also the valve handles. This particular type of regulator must be mounted more or less horizontally. So both of these are mounted horizontally facing inwards and uh, we have the long hose coming out here, the inflator here, the necklace here, and the high pressure uh, gauge here. Uh, you'll notice that there is actually a pretty severe uh, hose bend here with the high pressure hose and the inflator hose. One thing to note with this set of tanks is these are a set of low pressure 85s and they have a very long neck right here. If you were to use a set of aluminum 80s with a shorter neck, the hose angle would be that much more severe. So uh, that's the one thing to take into consideration when using uh, this type of uh, first stage uh, regulator design. This is the Mari 72X uh, first stage regulator. The 75X uh, has a similar port configuration, so anything about this would also be applicable to the uh, 75X. So uh, in this case, um, we have um, the two uh, 72X's. Uh, this is the long hose coming out of here uh, and then this is the down here is the uh, is the primary bladder inflator and uh, on this side over here is this is the uh, this is the second stage uh, for the necklace and then this is the redundant bladder inflator and then over here is the is the um, high pressure gauge hose so in this case, uh, if I was going to uh, be connecting a uh, dry suit hose, it would come out of the bottom port, which would be a parallel lead uh, to the primary bladder inflator. So the 72, the Mari 72X and the Mari 75X have exceptionally clean uh, 
leads uh, for the hoses. Uh, there's complete access to uh, both of the tank valves and also the isolator. This is a very clean, uh, very clean uh, setup. So this is the X Deep NX700 series regulators set up in uh, double uh, tank configuration. Uh, this configuration that I have right here is slightly different from that in the manual, uh, the suggested configuration uh, in the manual. And uh, one of the reasons for that is uh, I prefer to have my dry suit hose coming off of the right post. And um, in order to do that, the configuration um, would have to look like this. So this, of course, is the long hose. And this is the inflator uh, for the primary bladder. Uh, this is the uh, necklace regulator, and this is the redundant bladder inflator, and then the hose over here is the uh, this is the uh, high pressure gauge. So in this configuration, what's most important is that you have clear access to the uh, both valve knobs and also the isolator valve. Uh, and so as you can see, there's very clear uh, space uh, to each one of these. So the X-Deep uh, NX700 uh, regulator uh, is capable of a very clean uh, hose lead. Next, let's address the question of which one of these first stage regulator form factors uh, would be the best one for you. In reality, all the designs that we've discussed so far will provide a satisfactory solution uh, to a set of um, back mount twin sets. However, there are some that uh, if you have particular needs or particular preferences will be more appropriate for your use. So one of the first questions you would ask yourself is uh, whether or not you use a dry suit or you intend on using a dry suit. So if you don't intend on using a dry suit, almost any one of the regulator form factors will work. Uh, however, if you do decide to use a dry suit, then the next question becomes, which post will you use? If you are okay with the left-hand post, then uh, your uh, uh, selection choice is going to be a lot wider than if you prefer to have a right-hand post. So if you are going to use a dry suit and you do prefer the right-hand post, what that means is you're going to have to have a regulator form factor that has two ports coming out the bottom and another one at a 90 degree angle. This severely limits the number of regulators that are available uh, to do this. So the next question is whether or not you're going to use a redundant bladder or you're more interested in a balanced rig. Some balanced rig people uh, are likely not to want to use a redundant bladder. If you are going to use a redundant bladder, what that means is you're going to need to feed two things off of your left post regulator that being the redundant bladder inflator and also the necklace regulator. So in this case, if that is what you're going to do, you're going to need to have two ports that are in the same plane. A third question that you might ask yourself is if you are ever going to use independent doubles. To find out more about what independent doubles are, you can look at one of the other videos on this subject uh, in the channel. If you are going to use independent doubles, one of the things you must consider is how to route the hose in the event of a worst case situation. This would be where you need to use a left hand tank with a conventional valve. In this case, the left post regulator would need to be mounted on the tank backwards. In this case, the regulator ports must allow the regulator hoses to go around the tank rather than behind the tank. There are definitely some regulator designs that are more adaptable to be able to do this. In summary, there are many design form factor characteristics that would make a particular first stage regulator more or less suitable for twin set back mount diving. Only you can decide what is important for you and only you can decide which is the best regulator for your particular use. This is Chris with Dive Zone Scuba. Thanks for watching and please subscribe.